Hi, my name is Milan, and in this video, I want to walk you through my custom mediator implementation that's going to allow you to easily implement CQRS in your applications. Now, instead of just showing off, I do want to make this video educational, so I'm going to show you how I will improve my domain event dispatcher to no longer rely on reflection and instead make it strongly typed. So let's start with the domain events dispatcher. It allows me to implement the domain events pattern where I can define specific events that occur in my domain, like the user register domain event, which I can then raise from my use cases, like in the register user command handler. And then for each domain event, I can have one or more domain event handlers where I can implement additional behavior like sending email verification links, welcome emails, maybe scaffolding some infrastructure for a user. If I'm building a multi-tenant application, the opportunity is here are endless. And as a reminder, we implemented all of this with just two abstractions, the iDomainEvent marker interface and the iDomainEvent handler interface, which exposes one handle method. The key part in making all of this work is the domain event dispatcher type, which uses a service provider to resolve any handlers for a specific domain event and then invoke them. And this is the part I want to improve right now. So currently we are depending on reflection to do a lot of things and reflection in hot paths is going to slow down your applications. So a very common way of how we can improve this is by only paying the cost of reflection once. And I'm going to achieve this by creating a concurrent dictionary where the key is going to be a type and the value is also going to be a type. And I'm going to call this the handler type dictionary. And I'm going to just initialize a new instance. And what this will allow me to do is to replace this call to make generic type with a call to handler type dictionary, get or add, and then I just specify my type. And the type is going to be the type of my domain event. And if I don't have this value present in the dictionary, then I can provide a factory function, which allows me to use this type to construct my generic type. And this is what that would look like. So now, whenever we want to publish a domain event, we're only going to pay the cost of computing the concrete domain event handler type once. We can do the same thing here when calling get services because it's also going to do reflection inside by creating a generic type for the service type that we specify because we can have multiple domain event handlers for a single domain event. So we are resolving an enumerable of object. This can contain a collection of handler types. And instead of relying on this method to construct the generic type, we can do it ourselves. I'm not going to do that here, but it's just a reminder of what you can do. Now, what I am going to do is improve the logic that's fetching the handle method. I'm going to call this the handle method dictionary, and I'm going to use it here when resolving the handle method for a specific type. So I can just say handle method dictionary, get or add, and pass in the handler type. Otherwise, we're going to resolve this with a factory function where I'm going to fetch this value once. Now I do have to make this nullable so that everything works the same as before. However, this only solves part of the problem. Yes, our domain events dispatcher is going to be somewhat faster. However, it still depends on reflection and especially when resolving the handle method. And this is the part that I want to improve and I'm going to show you how. So I'm first going to create a new type that's going to be nested inside of my domain events dispatcher and it's going to be a private abstract class which I'm going to call handler wrapper. It's not going to be a generic type and instead I'm going to define an abstract method called handle which accepts a domain event and a cancellation token. The next thing I'm going to do is to create an implementation of my handler wrapper and it's going to be a generic type. So let's say handler wrapper of T and we have to implement our base type. Now I also need a generic constraint that T is an I domain event. So what's the point of these two types? The non-generic handler wrapper is going to allow me to pass in an I domain event instance which I have in my domain event dispatcher and invoke the handle method on this instance. The generic one is going to allow me to use the respective domain event handler. So what I can do here is pass in a handler object and inside of my generic handler wrapper, I'm going to have a private read-only I domain event handler of T, let's call this the handler. And how this is going to work is by casting the handler object 
that I get in my constructor argument into a concrete iDomain event handler. Then I need to override my handle method. And this is going to work by just invoking the handle method on the domain event handler. So I can say handle, pass in the domain event, which I can cast to the concrete type argument, and then I can pass in the cancellation token. What this is going to do is clean up this part here where we were resolving the handle method using reflection. We no longer have to do this and we can depend on our domain event handler interface. Now we do have to somehow create an instance of the handler wrapper. And I'm going to create a static method on my abstract type, which is going to return a handler wrapper instance. Let's call it create. And we're going to have two arguments. One is going to be our handler instance and the second is going to be the domain event type in the implementation we just have to construct our wrapper type by saying type of handler wrapper and then we call make generic type and we pass in the domain event type and then we just need to create an instance of our handler wrapper type now there are a couple of ways how you can do this you can say activator create instance and this is going to construct an object of a given type you can also use activator utilities let me show you if i find the activator utilities type there's also a create instance method however this one accepts a service provider so it can additionally resolve arguments from dependency injection now because our use case is simple i'm going to say activator create instance we're going to pass in our wrapper type and then we're going to pass in the concrete handler instance as the constructor argument now i'm going to cast this back to a handler wrapper and we can do this because our generic handler wrapper implements the non-generic one and finally i can return this from my method and with these two types in place i can now update my logic here by saying handler wrapper create and i pass in the handler instance and the domain event type which i can get using domain event get type so this will give me back my handler wrapper and finally i can say handler wrapper handle and pass in the domain event instance and the cancellation token of course since this is asynchronous i have to await it and now i can invoke my handle method and delegate this to the concrete domain event handler we can get a couple of more minor performance improvements by extracting the domain event type into the outer context and i'm just going to rename this to be the event type in the factory function i can get rid of the handle method dictionary and one more improvement we could make is this call here where we are constructing the generic handler wrapper so this is going to be almost identical to what we had here so let's say wrapper type dictionary and i can just use this right here by saying wrapper type dictionary get or add and then i can specify my domain event type as the key and then the event type in the factory function and we're going to see a slight performance improvement because we are caching the concrete wrapper types now the only thing that remains is to actually test out if any of this works and note that i can now get rid of the system reflection namespace which i was previously importing because i was heavily dependent on reflection let's place a breakpoint here and start the application and behind the scenes i'm going to kick off a user register process which is going to raise a domain event so my user was registered and i landed on the breakpoint in the domain events dispatcher now let's see if what i just built actually works we only have one domain event which is the user registered domain event. However, we have multiple handlers for this event. So if I take a look at the handlers collection, there are two of them, the user registered domain event handler and the user registered domain event handler one. So if I go into the for each loop, we are now going to go into our new code, which is constructing a handler wrapper. And if we execute this, we're going to get the concrete handler wrapper instance for the user register domain event. So if I go ahead and create this, you will see that this completes and we do get back a handler wrapper instance. And if I step into the handle method, and we take a look at the handler here you can see that we are getting our concrete user registered domain event handler and i can invoke the handle method without having to rely on reflection i can go ahead and do the same for my second handler 
and by going into the handle method, I can navigate directly to the domain event handler implementation. So this is all going to execute as you might expect. I can press continue and stop the execution. And the current implementation of the domain events dispatcher allows us to introduce additional extension points. Now I can go ahead and implement retry functionality for my domain event. I have an option of publishing the domain event to a channel and then handling them out of process without affecting the current implementation at all. We can also create decorators to introduce logging or record telemetry data and this more or less completes my custom domain events dispatcher. Now I did say at the start of the video that we are going to review my custom mediator implementation which we may even call Milanator regardless of how cringe that sounds. Now I have no intention of publishing this as a NuGet package, I'm only going to maintain it inside of my free clean architecture template which you can grab from the pinned comment right below this video. Now going back to the application layer, what we did to move away from mediator is define our custom command and query handler abstractions which expose a handle method. Now in my case I'm using the result pattern, so all the handlers return a result object that could be a basic result type or a generic one that can wrap a concrete value. The iQuery and the iCommand interfaces are now just marker interfaces that don't really do anything. And I already showed you what the domain event support looks like. Now, if we take a look at a handler, for example, the get to do query handler, we just have a handle method where we implement our query logic. The same goes for the command handlers. Let's say the create to do command handler, where we can implement our logic for what it takes to create a to do item. When it comes to pipeline behaviors, I solved this using the decorator pattern and for each handler abstraction I needed to define a separate decorator. So now I have a static type or let's say logging functionality and it's implemented with the command handler decorator where I can inject an inner command handler that I'm wrapping and then implement my behavior here. Now some are going to call this the proxy pattern, I believe that's the correct name to pronounce it, I just like to call it the decorator, we can also call it the middleware pattern. The main idea is the same, we want to wrap our existing functionality and be able to introduce new behavior before or after invoking a specific method, in this case just the one handle method. So here are the other two decorators, basically identical, and I also have a validation decorator which uses fluent validation to implement validation behavior. And the one benefit that you get with having concrete types like this is more control over the return type. So you can see that I'm returning result objects directly here without having to resort to reflection, which is something that you have to do with Mediator. I find it a bit unfortunate. And another benefit, and this is actually a big one, which is a big caveat of Mediator, is that you can directly step into your handlers. This is because Mediator uses an additional type that connects the request object in my case the query with the actual handler. With my implementation I can just inject the i command or query handler and then be able to jump into the implementation directly. So now I can go into the implementation and this also includes any decorators that you have in place. If you want to get all of this code for free go ahead and grab my clean architecture template that's going to be in the pinned comment right under this video and all I ask for in return is your email. I promise I won't spam you, I'm just going to send one email every Saturday Saturday for the .NET Weekly Newsletter. Check out my courses if you want to improve your software architecture skills and until next time stay awesome.